Does anybody not see this poll yet? Does everybody see the, what the question is? Everybody see the question? Okay. Because when this is done, you know, I'm just going to take about you know, 15 minutes the rest of the period. Ms. Alexander's going to be recording this. Like I said, just try to don't pay attention to the camera. Just focus on what we're doing on the board, okay? Extra credit goes here. The quizzes go here. So try to have the... I mean, you can take notes, but if you have your notes already, you don't need to take notes, right? So I'm just going to redo the quiz problem, okay? Is that clear? I'm trying to have you just pay attention versus take notes. You have the notes. I gave you the notes, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that handwritten example on the board, okay? That you recopy down. So get that prepared. Does everybody understand what we're doing? We're doing the handwritten example. Everybody understand what we're doing? It's basically problem number three from the quiz. Does everybody have the notes for that prepared? So yeah, extra credit goes here, quizzes go here. Details 
on some of the formulas and theory, but for now let's just work through an example and then we'll go back over the details later on during the week. So suppose we are given the integral cube root x to the fourth minus 10. We're going to raise that to the fifth power. We have an x squared dx. So that is our given problem. Okay? So anytime that you see a radical expression, the first thing you should always do is restate that as a fractional exponent. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and do that. So, so now we're working on the solution. So the first part of the solution is restating the radical as a fractional exponent. So we're going to get x to the 4 minus 10. We know for these types of problems, the root is always going to be the denominator. The exponent is going to always be the numerator. <coughs> okay? Then we have x cubed dx. Okay, so all I've done so far, all I've done is restate the problem. I have not really done any calculus yet. Okay? So the next thing we're going to do is, because the thing about integration by substitution, it's actually using a lot of building blocks we've been discussing throughout the semester. Okay? So let's you know, briefly review some of those building blocks. We're going to have to apply the chain rule. And this is going to be more so in the checking of our answer. We're going to have to apply the integration rules. And we are going to have to apply what we're doing all semester, which is our four-step process for solving you know, most problems. I told you this will work for most problems, including this one, one that you haven't seen before, you know, before you saw the assignment over the weekend. Okay? So, so this is indeed a composite function. And since this is, we're integrating a power, we know that the formula that we need to look at is u, sorry, x to the n dx equals x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus a constant. So hopefully you memorized that one by now. That's one of the ones I asked you to memorize, okay? Now, when you're, so this is basically integration that we've been discussing you know, for the past week and a half or so. But we're not doing simple integration today. We're doing something called integration by substitution. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this formula that you've already memorized, hopefully, because you've been working on lots of problems, right? And we're essentially going to replace everywhere you see an x, we're going to replace it with u. So, there's an x here. In fact, I'm going to write it right underneath so you'll see that's all I'm doing. So there's an x here. I'm going to replace it with u in dx. x there, replace it with u, n plus 1, n plus 1, plus c. Oops, I didn't replace the x with u, did I? Replace that x with u also. Why? That's just what you do, OK? Everybody you see an x, you replace it with u. We'll discuss the y's perhaps later in the week for the review, but um, essentially you take the known formula we've been discussing past week or so, replace n raising x with the u. The next thing you do is you identify all those components in the given problem. Okay? And if you recall, can anyone tell me what's our four step process? State the formula. Take the formula, that's correct. You label the relevant data. 
And substitute. And you solve. So this is this is basically the way we organize our problem solving process for most problems we do in this class. Okay, it's these simple four steps. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that for this particular problem. So this is the formula. This is the one we're stating. So we can say this is state, stating the formula. That's the formula we're going to be using for to solve this problem. Okay. Now. Let's go ahead and label the relevant, this should say, data. Sorry about my handwriting here. Label the relevant data. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have an integral here, sine, an integral sine here. We're looking for a u to the n. Well, look at this problem. That is our u. Everybody, does that make sense to everybody? It is what we're raising to the power. It's the base. Okay? This is the N. This is our DU. So is that clear so far? So that's called Labeling the relevant data. Again, I apologize for my handwriting there. All right, so is that clear so far? All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we have to make sure that we have everything we need. So, but the trick to these problems is we have to verify that this is indeed a DU, okay? That's what makes these problems a little bit tricky, okay? Versus some of the other ones we did, okay? So let's go ahead and do some derivatives. So if u we label to be x to the fourth minus 10, so everybody agree that's true based on our labeling, correct? All right. You learned on exam number two about de derivatives. du dx is the same thing as d dx of u, which is the same thing as d dx x to the fourth minus 10. All I did was I re-expressed this as this, and I substituted in the u in there. Is that clear? Yes. All right, so what you're trying to do is get the derivative of u to match up with the last part of it. Yeah, so what I'm trying to do is, you'll see it shortly. So I want you to hold that question. That's a very good question. But I'm basically trying to make sure that this is indeed the u, that that's our goal. Okay, so I want you to hold that question. That's a very good question. All right, so that's going to be, if we do with the derivative, that's going to be 4x to the third, correct? Because the derivative of 10 is 0, correct? So, that's, so this is indeed du dx. So du dx is 4x to the third. Does everybody agree with that? Everybody agree with that? Okay. Now, we're trying to find du. I'm gonna, now, I want you to understand, I am not really multiplying both sides by dx. But it, this is a good memory device, okay? But this is not a true multiplication. But if this were a multiplication, would of these cancel? But it's not a multiplication memory device. So that's going to be du equals 4x to the third dx. So now we have a du. So, Kayla? I think this gets to your question. We have identified du. Du is this. Does this match that? Yes or no? No, it does not. So what do we do? We, we add a 4 here. But you can't do that in math, can you? Because I changed the problem, didn't I? So what am I going to do? I'm going to undo it by putting a 1 4 out here because 1 4 times 4 is 1, 1 times anything is the same thing. 1 times anything is whatever you multiply that 1 by. So 1 times this problem is still that problem. I haven't changed anything. All right? So that's why we did what we did. So now let's continue on 
with our, our process. So we have the U, we now have the DU, we have the N. I'm going to erase this to make some more room, okay? So I'm going to have to wrap this up in a couple of minutes so you can do the poll. But I want to make sure everybody's with me. That's the tricky step. You have to make sure that that's indeed a DU. We, it wasn't, so we added a four so that it was a DU, but we balanced it out by putting a one-fourth out there. All right? So, now we are ready to solve this formula that we stated. And all I'm going to do now is continue on with steps three and four. That's where we're at, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to be, it's going to be a one-fourth on the outside. And then u, by substitution, is x to the fourth minus 10. Because we labeled it. I erased it, but we did label that to be u, correct? I erased it, but we did label it to be that way. N, we labeled to be 5 over 3 divided by n plus 1. OK, I didn't give you n plus 1, so let's do n plus 1. n plus 1 is 5 over 3 plus 1, which equals 5 over 3 plus 3 over 3. Why did I pick 3 over 3? Because 3 over 3 is still 1, but in order to add fractions, they have to have the same denominator. That's why I made the 1 a 3 over 3. That's also known as finding a common denominator. <coughs> All right, so that's going to be 5 over 3 plus 1 over here, 5 over 3 plus 1 over here, plus a C, I'm sorry, I just realized I made a mistake there. There should not be an integral sign there because we've already, we're evaluating integral, okay? All right, so I apologize for that. All right, and guess what? We're almost done. We're almost ready to do the poll. It's a quick poll, it's a yes or no question. But let's go ahead and solve this out. The final answer is 1 4 x to the 4 minus 10 raised to the 8 over 3 divided by 8 over 3. That's the, that's the final answer. Tomorrow I'm going to show you how to simplify this. But essentially, if you get this far, you prove that you understand how to work through the mechanics of this four-step process as it relates to this formula that, that deals with the top, topic of integration by substitution. So with that being said, to kind of close things out, I'm going to ask the question. You all have the poll on your phones now, right? The simple question that I want you to answer, yes or no, the answer will pop on my iPad here. Did you understand the problem I just worked? Yes or no? And if you answer yes or no, you're free to leave. But make sure you answer yes or no. And if you didn't quite follow it, we'll go over it again tomorrow, and we can also talk about the office hours. So, so far I got 19 responses. I got 20 responses. Do we need to turn any notes? If you have the extra credit notes, you can turn those in here. I got um, 20 more responses. I got 15. You do understand. Six, you don't. Thanks for participating. Make sure you respond before you leave. I got 23 responses, 16 yeses, 7 noes. The question is, I fully understand the problem that I started just working the board. True is 16, false is 8. I'll have a great day. We're at 17 and 9. True, 17, false, 9. This is the poll. Yeah.